Okay, so it's been about 20 hours or so and Cobb sent me the 5 16 adapter that was quick if Cobb if you're you, if you ever see this thank you anyways so just wanted to show the difference the one in my left is the 3 8 the one in my right hand is the 5 16 that's the difference so I cannot use this or this 3 8 to 5 16 adapter so that's a no-no and all I have left is these three so I gotta make a connection so my original idea was gonna hook this up straight to the fuel rail but then with the sensor I mean I could probably get away with it but there's also that plug here that might hit the intercooler and there's also the hood when the hood closes up it seals it makes a seal around the intercooler so that may become a problem uh, right about here so what i'm thinking first the white connector here and then i can hook up I actually call them again and i i can hook up this is a both a barbed and bundy connector so hoses and uh, these guys can connect to it so this then the adapter then the 90 degree connector here and a hose from here to here and then I'm just gonna probably bend the bracket here bend it up so I can mount this damper onto the bracket and this should be good I hope all right, everything is back together again, full with oil, coolant, all the catch cans, many zip ties, connected that uh, flex fuel sensor up uh, by the auto sensor underneath the car. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the fuel pump. All right. Oh. Here's the 12 I was looking for. And now I'm just going to turn the ignition on a few times to prime the fuel system and check for leaks, build up the pressure. It's a loud and there's a leak. Oh fuck, I knew it, man. I knew it. Ah, you know, <laughs> I knew this was, wasn't going to work. Even Cobb told me, yeah, yeah, it's okay to connect. Uh, no, it's not. It's not okay. Don't want any fuel puddles on top of the block when I start it. All right, I'm going to fix this up. I'm going to get rid of this connector. Actually, no, I'm going to get rid of this connector. Hook up the adapter straight to the fuel, the hard fuel line. And move this connector to the front. And obviously I'm going to have to make this longer.
think we are good. No leaks of the fuel pump, no leaks here. As far as I can see. And the fuel pump is loud. There's a little bit of fuel down there, but that's from before. Who says you can't put a hood on your own? I started I'm gonna prime it again but since everything is hooked up I disconnected the crank sensor very easy thing to do right here so it doesn't start so I just wanted to build up the pressure again to make sure that it's nice and primed full of oil all the oil passages before I do the final start Okay, we got oil pressure. All right, let's do this. So far so good. All right, it's smoking a little bit from all the fresh oil and the coolant. I, I actually spilled quite a bit of coolant when I was taking the oil cooler off. Some of it went on the headers. That's why you see this smoke over here. I got the check engine light on from the crack sensor and a fuel pressure sensor and EVAP <clears throat> which is, that, that's going to be normal the crank sensor should go away anyways, I'm going to check coolant alright, I'm going to check oil about half alright, I don't need to run it I'm not breaking in any cams or whatever so let's take it for a first Pin. All right, I don't know where my suction cup mount. Jesus, this clutch. It grabs right away. Oh, come on. RPMs are too low. It's idling too low. So we're taking a short drive. Just to get the oil flowing and then change the oil after, after this drive, just a mile or two. No boost. delicate driving third gear right now it's making quite a few new noises
this is what you want to do when you're breaking in the engine RPMs up and down basically all right I'm gonna do this for another mile and I'll see you at the garage all right had a, a lovely drive it uh, died on me a few times I adjusted the idle on the access port yes you can do that and uh, I left it at one thousand rpms at idle and it didn't die for me after that but I have a coolant leak a coolant and an oil leak the oil leak I found which is the return of oil from the turbo I don't know if you're gonna see that see that clamp right there right between the CV axle and the control arm those two needs to be replaced this is my fault I should have known two of those they've gotten weak over the years so that's the return line for the oil for the I mean uh, the turbo so those two need to be it's a short hose it's hard to get to but then you can see all this blue coolant right here and I saw quite a bit on top and it's leaking pretty badly but other than that everything is pretty good even the welds right here the oil pan is dry all right I'm gonna take the filter out plug this up the oil pan and look for that coolant leak all right check out this oil this is what two three miles few minutes of idling and look how dirty it is it's well it's from the assembly loop this is normal but I'm looking for metal shavings and I do not see any I saw one little piece I'm gonna take a closer look once I pour it out to to this bottle here and make sure and uh, find out exactly how many quarts I had because I kind of forgot exactly I poured in I think six and a half and I was showing about half a little bit less than half of oil on the dipstick all right quick update found the leak I don't know if you're gonna see it but it's actually squirting out right now the the bottom hose going into the turbo right now it's changing direction I don't know if you're seeing this yeah yeah you can see this there we go that's the that's the coolant leak all right I'm gonna shut it off and the only check engine light code that's uh, on left on is the EVEP which the tuner simply forgot to turn off so two things I gotta fix I already changed the oil the new Valvoline oil is in there also conventional oil 1030 for braking purposes Fixing the coolant leak, that's not going to be an issue, just either replace the hose or put a, a stronger clamp on it. I'm just probably going to end up putting a stronger clamp on it. But getting to that turbo uh, hose, that's going to be an issue. I'm sure I'm going to have to take the cooler intercooler off and maybe I'll be able to reach in, in there. But not too bad, not too bad, I gotta say. Alright, this is what's going on right now. I tried going for a shortcut without removing the turbo I started removing the headers and I figured if I remove the up pipe which goes right here I could somehow get uh, to this the rem remember the um, oil return line for the turbo so there was the, there's a clamp right here and right here and it was impossible to do with 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 the up pipe and the turbo in there and imagine without the up pipe because I mean this is the up pipe but it's now it's just uh, it reaches all the way up to here right now it just kind of dropped down but the turbo still being here all around right in this area so I, I'm my view is blocked so <laughs> had to remove the turbo so to remove the turbo 
had to remove the down pipe, up pipe, to remove the up pipe, had to remove the headers, uh, drain the coolant, a lot of work, right? Remove the rate, the inner cooler, and I mean, a lot of work. Just to fix this, the oil was leaking from right here or here, I think the bottom one. Anyways, so I'm putting three new clamps um, on the coolant line that was leaking. And I'm putting a new hose on the oil line. So this is ready to go. And this one is tight. This clamp, I'm going to have to bring it down and tighten it up after everything is installed, after the turbo is installed. I cannot do it any other way. All right, guys, it's been a day. It's been a day and it's been 30 miles about give or take after I put everything back together. Let's check what's going on right now. So I did go, gave it a bath, as you can see. It was pretty dusty on the outside. I'm still probably gonna visit a shop of some sort that has a, a lift so I can wash it underneath. Anyways, what is going on here is absolutely nothing. No leaks, no oil, no coolant leaks. Everything is looking good. Even the oil pan here. Bone dry on the welds. Which is awesome news. Stuff like this is the grease here and there. It's from before in one of the um, videos. This rubber boot here, the CVXO boot, ripped open and it threw grease everywhere in this area here. Anyways, still gotta install this protective bracket over here and this H brace that I have. And that's it underneath. And as you can see, it's nice and clean. All right guys, so this is it for now. Next video is going to be most likely on the dyno, unless something happens, which let's hope it won't. It's driving really good right now. The oil temperature never went over 180-ish, 175. Coolant temp was 180. Obviously I'm braking in the engine. I can't really open it up. My max boost as I was driving was about three or five. That's what you gotta do. Don't go over five. This is just a second oil change. When you're braking the engine in, you wanna, for the first uh, 100 miles or so, I, I may end up doing another oil change in 100 or 200 miles. Uh, I'm gonna see, but you, want to drive in let's say you're going on let's say you're going on side streets you want to rev it up to maybe three four thousand rpms then stay in gear let the rpms drop let the car slow down on its own and then just drive it like drive it like you don't, you don't know how to drive it basically don't go on the highway go around uh, your city no need to go fast just uh, up and down with rpms sorry for this Flickering, I, I see it. It's from the fluorescent lights. I gotta do something about it. It's not the camera, it's it's the lights. I may end up installing LEDs. Once they once they warm up, it's a bit better, but yeah. Alright guys, thanks for watching for now, and I'll see you soon.